Hey guys, Brandon here with Texas Plinking with a very exciting video. If you guys have been keeping up with this rifle that I had uh, ordered from Alamo Precision Rifle, my latest bolt action uh, rifle uh, for long range shooting, um, you would know that I was expected to be taking delivery in that around March or so. And as you can see from the thumbnail and title, it has come in about two months early. So it's sitting over there in the bed all boxed up. So going to go ahead and swing the camera over there. But before I do, if you guys have also been keeping up with the channel, uh, I thought you guys might want to see this. So this is, uh, I'll just talk about it very, very quickly. If you came for the Alamo, then I'll make this brief. This is actually the uh, Bushmaster uh, XM15 AR15. And in the last video, I uh, talked about how I wanted to go through a couple changes, and it has. So this is the same rifle I put on the uh, Mark IV. I'm sorry, not the Mark IV, the Leupold Mark AR that used to be on the Aero Precision down there. These are actually some uh, pretty inexpensive quick detach rings I was able to pick up on Amazon, which they're not too bad, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, this is a Yankee Hill uh, A2 stock, some Ergo grip, uh, we've got a short mag here, I think this is a 20 rounder. Um, and then we have got just this foregrip up here, one of these CV Life cheapo uh, bipods, but they get the job done, uh, less than 20 bucks on Amazon there. I uh, got a uh, Ballistic Advantage 18 inch barrel with a 1 in 7 twist with the rifle lid gas system uh, uh, tube right here, the gas block, all that good stuff. 12 inch free float quad rail. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of how you see it now. So, now it's ready to go. I haven't even shot it yet. And then, I, of course, I gave it a, kind of a rough rattle can paint job, as you guys can see. So, it's going to stay like this, as you see. The only things are going to change is I have a muzzle brake coming in that's going to be an AAC 51T quick detach uh, for my suppressor that comes in. God knows when. And then I also have, because it's a very crunchy mil spec trigger I don't really like, I have another LaRue MBT2S uh, coming in. So that's gonna be nice, but thought I'd show you guys that. Hopefully I ran through that quickly enough. But now I've got the uh, two 18 inch barrel uh, SPR. So go out with some friends and uh, plank at some steel targets from a little bit of range. Without any further ado, I'll uh, swing the camera over, show you guys the new precision rifle. All right, and so here it is. Uh, I got this case. It came with like the same cheap case, but it was a, at least a hard case. It came uh, with the Bushmaster ACR, if you guys saw the unboxing on that. It came with that one, but obviously I want something a little bit better for transporting to and from the range. So this is another one of those uh, uh, Plano gun guards or all weather tactile or whatever. This is their uh, double scope case, uh, which, you know, for my application doesn't fit two rifles with a scope, but at least it's long enough for my rifle. In fact, it's a pretty perfect fit. This is the same case I have for my uh, EBR, uh, the M1A. And so that fits that one very nicely. Anyway, got a lot of latches here. Got uh, six latches with uh, holes for locking. So you can go to the airport, you have wheels on it as well. Two different carry handles. Uh, this was about a hundred bucks on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. This one's also green, so which works because uh, this rifle has a uh, pretty cool Cerakote to it. But So here it is, gonna go through that in just a second. We got uh, three accurate mags, 10 rounders. Uh, I still have a 10 rounder on the way, so I'm gonna make a cut out here for, for that. I have uh, just a box of Hornady 140, I think this is 147 grain in here, but I've already shot it as the video is gonna show you guys, and uh, it prefers 140 grain ELDMs. That's from my experience with the 24 inch barrel, one and eight twist. But the 147s do pretty good. I'm just gonna shoot through those and start by 140s from now on. So here it is. Uh, I guess we'll just take it out. All right, and here it is. So in case you guys are starting from scratch and you haven't seen any videos of me talking about this before, I've only mentioned it a couple times anyway. Uh, this is my latest rifle. This is a Alamo Precision Rifle or APR Ranger. Ranger is the model. They have a couple different ones, but these, this is definitely the most popular one. I found this when I was like on some, uh, looking through some gun magazine. Saw them uh, there and I figured custom rifles for quite a bit less than most custom rifles run for. So I'm gonna go through that in just a second, but just to talk about my build here. Uh, yeah, like I said, this is the Ranger, which comes with a couple options already. Uh, like the Graybow Renegade stock. This is practically a McMillan A5 without a cheek riser. Uh, so I didn't really need the cheek riser, but what I did get is this pouch, put a little bit of the padding that the pouch came with to get it right on the site, uh, on the height that I wanted. That way it's just a nice even, uh, even landing uh, on the scope, which I'll talk about in just a second. But yeah, nice pouch, came in tan. I kind of uh, just sprayed it just a little bit with uh, some olive drab and then uh, whatever I missed is kind of tan here which ends up working well with the Cerakote anyway. Had some Velcro here, put an American flag and then one little uh, pow or, or, uh, slot here for one round but when you open this up there's like five more slots to put some ammunition and whatever else you want on there so 
Uh, I really do like this pouch. The first gun I had with a pouch like that, it's actually very, very nice and convenient. Uh, and then long enough to fit this Macmillan A5 style stock. Uh, yeah, so speaking of the stock though, I uh, went with a traditional Gap uh, Cerakote, which I love. I would just always love the Cerakote on uh, precision rifles. They got a modern looking gun with this kind of old school camo. Love it. Um, anyway, uh, the bolt I uh, got uh, medium knurled. But yeah, really do like that. Nice and sleek. This is a true Remington 700 action. I guess I might mention already it's chambered 6.5 Creedmoor, 24 inch barrel with a 1 in 8 twist. Uh, I got a Seekins 20 MOA rail on there as well, just to help it stretch out even more, although the scope doesn't really need any help. Uh, this bipod is not a CV life because I didn't want the cheap marking, but it's not a fancy bipod anyway. I got this on Amazon, one of those like sub $20 ones. So far, it's been very, very stable. I've had a lot of uh, experiences with these cheaper bipods and so far haven't felt the need to step up to something else. So anyway, some things that are included with the price of the Ranger are flutes on the barrel and the bolt. It's just what kind of flutes do you want? So they're known for the ratcheting spiral, which is kind of straight and then ratchet and straight and then spiral ratchet, you know. Uh, but I, I thought about that and then I just went with straight flutes because uh, the Gap camo is just kind of a traditional camo, so I just want kind of a traditional flute. Uh, so there we go, we have some, uh, some decently deep uh, straight flutes on there with spiral fluting on the bolt, which I just love that. You can just see it on the action uh, when you're using it. Uh, not just looking cool, uh, but uh, just the function of the spiral fluting. Whenever dirt gets in there, it just falls in those uh, grooves in there. Uh, but yeah, the overall action itself. Uh, I don't know if the Alamo really did anything. It feels very smooth, but I don't imagine that feeling too far off from you know another Remington 700, but that feels pretty fine. Uh, yeah, and then safety in here, all that kind of stuff, you're familiar with the Remington 700 action. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, this bottom metal is the M, what is it, N something 5, whatever it is. So it takes the accurate mags. Uh, like I said, I got a 10 rounder coming in, so six out a little bit further, that'd be nice. Alright, finally talking about the scope. I made a full review on the scope because I got the scope a uh, month and a half before the rifle actually came in, so I was ready. This is a, um, a Steiner T5XI, 5 to 56 56 millimeter bell, 34 millimeter tube, has a ton of uh, elevation and windage adjustments, so that's what I like with that 34 millimeter. Came with this throw lever, came with the flip up caps. This was $1,600 on uh, Amazon when I bought it, which is a steal for the specs that this scope has. It competes with the Razer HDs and the ATACers as well, uh, in my opinion. So um, I adjusted the ocular focus where I like it. I brought it out. I will show some scope cam footage when, uh, when I go shooting uh, long range, which is all going to be in this video, by the way and you guys uh, will be able to see for yourself, but absolutely love it. The SCR reticle as well. Oh my God, that was freaking awesome. Goes down to 20 mil, so if you don't want to, you don't even have to adjust. Uh, but yeah, when you do adjust, the changing window system, the tactile clicks, the zero stop, zero reset, everything about it, very, very nice. And then these are some Vortex 34 millimeter rings, which I believe they get them from Seekins, uh, from what I heard. So anyway, rock solid uh, setup. I got the rings, the bipod, and the scope, uh, and the pouch from Amazon, so I'll put the links to those in the description as well. Uh, what else am I forgetting? Just one more thing, 5 8 by 24 threads. Uh, for when my suppressor gets in, it's an AAC SDN 6762, something like that, so that's gonna uh, work on this one. I have a muzzle brake coming in tomorrow uh, with the 51T ratchet system as well, so kind of want all my guns to have that as many as I can, that way that one suppressor can kind of cover me for just about everything. But anyway, I ran through everything. Uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys some of the shooting footage. I went out shooting, I think it was two days ago, uh, so we went ahead and shot, and just keep in mind, as of right now, it only has about 100 rounds, maybe 110 rounds through it. So still going through the break-in procedure, but uh, nonetheless, it, it was shooting pretty darn good. So uh, I'm just going to break this down. If you guys only want to see the long range shooting, I'm just going to tell you to skip to a certain point in the video. I'll put that over here. But if you care to see how it did at 100 yards when I was trying to group it for the first time, but we tried grouping with uh, 140 grain American Gunner boat to hull point, 140 grain ELDM, 147 ELDM, and then 130 grain Burger Hybrids uh, from Federal Gold Medal Match. So uh, I went ahead and did some uh, grouping with that. So like I said, if you only care about long range, just skip to a certain point of the video. If you want to see the groupings, check this out, and then we'll talk about the groupings when, uh, when we get back.
it up. So the first group I did was with the 140 grain American Gunner non-match ammunition. This is for under a dollar shot as well on buds in a box of 50. Stuff I shoot quite a bit. Uh, at least I did with the Ruger Precision Rifle and I really did like it. It's effective out to a, even a thousand yards from my experience. Anyway, so uh, went ahead did a five shot group. What I did a mistake on is this was the first shot of the day. This was a cold, cold bore. So it was a little high. I remember when I sighted it in, I had some heat in it as well. So it was a little high and started coming down. Uh, so yeah, I kind of, I just kept running with it, but I, I meant to take a shot or two uh, at another target just to kind of get some temperature. But anyway, first shot and then the next four are right here. So if I did a next shot, it would just probably be right there as well. So that is exactly an inch, I believe, if we're talking, if we're including the cold bore, which I really don't want to. But yeah, that's exactly an inch. If we just count these four right here that, you know, we're a consistent temperature, that is about just under three quarters of an inch in between half and three quarters. Yeah, right there, as you guys can see. So that's very, very nice. And that's again, non-match ammunition. Uh, the next one was not that one. What did I shoot the next time? I believe I did the 140 grain uh, ELD. Now, uh, this one did very good as well. This is, let me check again. I believe the whole uh, furthest to furthest is uh, three quarters of an inch, so sub MOA there. Yeah, definitely, as you guys can see. Um, but the uh, if we take out one outlier, which I don't really recall pulling it, but I'm, I might have, but check this out. This one hole right here is three shots, and then this one right here is a fourth of an inch. So yeah, I really do like that. Again, uh, I kind of had limited uh, time and ammunition because I didn't know what I wanted to buy a lot of because what I would like, but uh, I bet if I put four of these targets out there and shot this group four different times, letting the barrel cool down uh, quite a bit, then we would have been uh, seeing some very, very tight groups. But anyway, it's out of my way, either way you put it, but look at that, that is promising. Uh, I believe after that I did the 147 stuff. I think these were the first three shots, or maybe these were. So yeah, looking very, very good. It's out of my way anyway, I already measured this. It's a, a 0.9 inch, so just, just sub uh, MOA. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, furthest or furthest. But then if we wanna take out these two outliers, these three are pretty good as well. Uh, what else do we have? Then we have the 130 burgers. The first three shots were like these three right here, which looked pretty good. And then one just went out here, starting to draw a little line, then one went out left a bit. I will say the wind was gusting, as you guys will be able to hear, about 15 miles an hour, sometimes maybe even 20. How much that really affects a 6.5 Creedmoor to 100 yards, I'm not sure. Uh, pitch in your guys' two cents on that, but uh, it wasn't affecting my shooting, but maybe the bullet down range just a bit. I'm not too sure, but anyway, if we go further for this, it's a one and a quarter inch. If we just go with these four right here, that is about just just about three quarters of an inch. So, uh, but yeah, the first three were really, really good. That would have been, that's just about half an inch right there as well. So I like five shot groups. They kind of tell the story a little bit better. So if we go with that, from now on, I'm gonna be shooting uh, 140 grain ELD and then that flyer uh, with some time, some break in or whatever, and then obviously me getting better as a shooter, that should start you know, going away. We'll get a really, really tight group. So but rest assured, I will be doing more groups in the future and I will be sure to share them on Instagram and here on YouTube. So uh, yeah, stay tuned with uh, some more of that. All right, now for the part that you guys have probably been waiting for, and that is the long range shooting, see how it performs out to a thousand yards. Uh, so one thing I just wanna you know, ask for your guys' help and opinion on, is uh, this is obviously a new YouTube channel, new uh, video format doing this long range stuff. So as of right now, what I'm doing is the main screen is like the long range zoom camera. That's gonna be on the steel target. And I put myself shooting the gun on like kind of the bottom left. Uh, that way you can just see impact and all that stuff. So you guys seem to like that video format. I've uh, told that works and people do like that. What I'm starting to do now, instead of like trying to put text over which target I'm shooting, because I kind of, there's a lot of targets in frame and I don't want you guys to realize what target I'm aiming at until it hits, uh, if that makes sense. So what I'm wanting to do, let me know what you guys think about this. This is gonna be the first test of it. If you guys don't like it, let me know. 
But if, as you saw in the intro, I'm going to put a digital uh, like a PNG file reticle uh, on the target I'm aiming at. That is not my reticle. That is not what I'm looking at. That is just a point of reference. It's a fake reticle, if you will, uh, but it, I just kind of dragged it in uh, in post so you guys can see what I'm aiming at. So it's kind of like a scope cam, but that's not my actual point of aim, but that's the target I'm aiming at. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I didn't do that initially, uh, like the ones where it's just obvious. So for example, the first one is at 250 yards. I shot the steel twice and then I realized that's just very, very boring because it's just too easy with this rifle. So then I saw a couple of clay pigeons uh, sitting around there at 250 yards. And so when I start aiming for those, I put the crosshairs on those. So anyway, hopefully you guys like that format. Just let me know. I need some feedback on that. If you guys like the digital or the, uh, the point of reference crosshairs, I'll be sure to do that in all future videos from now on. Uh, so anyway, here's some long range shooting. Fun? Oh yeah. 
All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Like I said, give me some feedback what you guys think about the point of reference crosshairs. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought it looked kind of cool, like, like a scope cam without me having to put the camera, you know, uh, in between myself and the scope. Um, but anyway, just kind of a quick rundown. Like I said, 250, two out of two on that steel plate. Then I realized it's a little boring. So I went with, uh, for clay pigeons, I shot one once, hit it, it slid down, went for another one, hit it, and then I went back. You know, it's hiding behind the uh, the still target. There's just a little bit, just enough to aim at, and then it hit it. So this thing is super effective at 250. Obviously, it'll uh, shoot tax at that distance. Uh, 500 yards. I think I only hit that one twice because I've only shot it twice. Because again, it was just too easy. Um, then I went out to 657, but did not get that on on video on accident. There's a little popper about this big at 657. Missed once, made the correction, and hit it twice. A little thing like this at 657 yards. Unfortunately, I had the target on a similar looking uh, target at a different range, so oops, so couldn't get footage of that one. Then went out to 750 yards, and I think I missed my first shot. That's the only one I missed because the ballistic calculator velocity is off a little bit. I need to make a quick adjustment, which I actually already did, uh, so it should be fine now. But made a, a quick adjustment and then nailed all the targets from then on uh, at 750, so that's good. Then got confident, went all the way out to 1,000, missed my first shot, elevation was good, just a little to the left, made the correction, and then shot the rest at 1,000, just fine. Considering the wind as well, uh, just speaks for this uh, caliber, the 6.5 Creedmoor, absolutely love it, and this rifle carries it very, very nicely. One thing I want to mention as well is usually when I do this long range stuff with like my SPRs or even the Ruger Precision Rifle or whatever, and of course this is probably because I was a novice shooter at the time as well. I'm trying to get more experience now. What I like to do is when I bring the two cameras out there, I get the long range, uh, you know, camera zoomed into the target, uh, but I don't start recording it until I hit the target. That way I know my dope is right. This one was like the first time I'm like, I'm just going to go for it. If I miss it, I know exactly what I need to do because this thing is just going to shoot it uh, there every single time. So you guys were seeing my first shots at those ranges. That is not me editing it. Uh, I kept in all my misses on this video. So that just speaks volumes for the gun. Uh, all I need to do is just make a little tweak on the ballistic calculator, like I said, which I already did, so it should be shooting lights out. So next time I go out, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the camera out again and bring you guys along with that. But there is a new rifle, thought I'd introduce you guys. Hope I didn't drag on and on too much. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the shooting demonstration, but we're gonna go ahead and go out again. But this was the lengthy video just because it was the introduction to the whole thing, so I am back to long range shooting, uh, so that feels very, very good. So that's gonna do it for this video. Um, Something very exciting is coming in tomorrow that I'm going to have to pick up from my FFL. So tomorrow is Wednesday. I might make the video on Wednesday, maybe Thursday, just kind of give some kind of uh, distance between this video and that one. But that's going to be a pretty fun unboxing video. If you're on Instagram, then uh, on my Instagram, you saw my story a couple days ago, you might know what it is. So anyway, uh, stay tuned for that. But that's going to do it for this one. See you guys on the next one.